Welcome to Combustion Analysis, a tutorial. We're going to talk about how you can essentially blow apart a hydrocarbon or a carbohydrate to get an idea of what the chemical formula of it is. First, a little bit of the background of combustion analysis. How does it work? Well, we take some sort of molecule, let's say a hydrocarbon, something consisting of carbon and hydrogen. We add in some oxygen. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yep, yep. And then whoosh, we light it on fire. When you combust a hydrocarbon, you get two products, carbon dioxide and water. And we blew our entire special effects budget on uh, this high-tech animation here, so hope you enjoyed. Let's take a look at the actual chemical reactions that occur here. If you take a hydrocarbon and you add oxygen to it and appropriate amount of heat, you'll end up combusting it to form CO2 and H2O. It's important to note that all of the carbon from the hydrocarbon ends up in carbon dioxide, CO2, and all of the hydrogen from the hydrocarbon ends up in water, H2O. We can also do a combustion analysis of other molecules. Commonly, you'll see carbohydrates, which are molecules that consist of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Very similar idea. We give them a, a source, a fuel source like oxygen, we combust them, and we get CO2 and H2O as a product. Once again, all of the carbon ends up in carbon dioxide, all of the hydrogen ends up in H2O. We can use this fact then to figure out what the original formula, or at least what the empirical formula of our molecule was. And remember, moles are going to be our friends here. So let's take a look at two different examples. Combustion analysis of 503 milligrams of a mystery hydrocarbon, um, hence the name hydrogen carbon, hydrocarbon, neat, yields 1.628 uh, grams of CO2. What is the empirical formula of this mystery carbohydrate? So what we're gonna do, in a problem like this, you can either be given the amount of carbon dioxide or the amount of water produced. You don't need both. You could be given both and that works just fine as well. But if you have one, you can figure out the other. So let's start by taking our carbon dioxide and converting it into the universal currency of chemistry, the mole. Carbon dioxide weighs 44 grams per mole. Then, once we know the moles of carbon dioxide, well, for every one carbon dioxide, how many carbons are there? This is a pretty, pretty user-friendly calculation here because for every one mole of CO2, there's a mole of carbon. What this does is it allows us to find out how much carbon was in our original sample. And that's gonna be very useful for figuring out the formula. With this particular example was 0 0.037 moles of carbon. All right, great. Now, how can we backtrack and figure out how much hydrogen was in this molecule? Since we know the amount of carbon, we can actually find the mass of carbon in our mystery hydrocarbon. So I'm gonna take this 0 0.037 moles of carbon and I'm going to convert it into grams of carbon. Carbon weighs about 12 grams per mole. And really technically I could do the 12.011 grams of carbon per mole to be more precise, but really using 12 grams uh, for carbon works pretty well. These types of problems. It turns out that in our original hydrocarbon, 0.444 grams of it were carbon. And I'm, I'm alternating here between uh, milligrams and grams. Here we have grams. We're told that we started with 503 milligrams. 503 milligrams, if we divide that by 1,000, we get 0 0.503 grams of our original hydrocarbon. So our molecule that consisted of carbon and hydrogen had a mass of 0 0.503 grams. And of that, 0 0.444 of it were carbon. So if we subtract that 0 0.444, we'll end up getting the mass of hydrogen in that molecule. And if we know the mass of hydrogen, we can find the moles. We're gonna take that 0 0.059 grams of hydrogen. Hydrogen, again, pretty user-friendly with respect to calculations. It's one gram for every one mole, which gives us 0 0.059 mole 
of hydrogen. We now have our ratio of carbon to hydrogen, 0 0.037 mole of carbon to 0 0.059 mole of hydrogen. Neat, we're so close. In order to make these numbers more user-friendly, we can take the smaller number of moles and we'll divide both values by that. In this case, the carbon, we only had 0 0.037 mole of it. So we'll divide both of them by that. And what this does is it makes one of them have um, a, a value of one for our ratio, which we'll see is more user-friendly. So for every one mole of carbon, there are 1.6 mole of hydrogen. Our last step for finding an empirical formula then is to keep multiplying these values until we get more or less whole numbers. With experimental data, oftentimes the numbers won't work out perfectly, but we can get it closer than C1H1.6. Okay, so we're gonna multiply until we get whole numbers. If I multiply both of these by two, our subscripts would be two and 3.2. So C2H3.2. Can we have 3.2 hydrogens in a molecule? The answer is no, we can't take an atom and slice it into little pieces. Doesn't work that way. Let's try multiplying by them by three. C, three, H, 4.8, nope, we can do better. Try multiplying by four. C, four, H, 6.4, no, but I think we're getting close. I know we're getting close. Let's multiply by five. Oh, oh, oh there we go. C, five, H, eight. We have our empirical formula solved. Awesome. If we were given the molar mass, you can find molar mass by using uh, mass spectrometry, for example, then we'd be able to figure out what the actual molecular formula is. Here, without any additional information, though, we have to stop at the empirical formula. Now then, let's do combustion analysis of a mystery carbohydrate, a molecule containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In this problem, we're told that we start with a 5.46 gram sample, and it yields 9.24 grams of CO2 and 3.78 grams of H2O. And once again, we're trying to find the empirical formula. As with any combustion analysis problem, we're always going to start by finding the moles of carbon using the CO2 or the moles of hydrogen using the H2O. Or if we have both, we'll find both. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So 9.24 grams of CO2. Once again, carbon dioxide has a molar mass of 44 grams per mole. And for every one mole of CO2, we get a cool one mole of carbon. This tells us that our original sample that we combusted had 0 0.210 mole of carbon in it. All right, let's do the same thing with hydrogen. We had 3.78 grams of H2O. For every 18 grams of H2O, we have one mole of H2O. And here's where we have to be a little careful because H2O, emphasis on the two, H2O, for every one mole of H2O, how many moles of hydrogen do we have? Two. If you said two, you're correct. This ends up being 0 0.420 mole of hydrogen. Neat. We can see right now it's a two to one ratio of hydrogen to carbon, cool. But we can't forget that we also have oxygen in this particular mystery molecule. Once again, we're gonna backtrack. We're gonna find the mass of the carbon and hydrogen. We're going to subtract it from our original mass. And then we're going to use that remaining mass to find out how many mole of oxygen we have. So 0 0.210 mole of carbon, 12 grams per mole of carbon. Uh, this is 2.52 grams of carbon. That tells us our original sample had that much carbon in it. Hydrogen, once again, a very user-friendly calculation, 0.42 mole of hydrogen, one gram per mole. Our original sample had 0.42 grams of hydrogen. Now we'll take the sum of those two, subtract it from the original amount, 5.46 grams, minus the 2.52 grams of carbon and the 0.42 gram of hydrogen to get the remaining amount, which was 2.52 grams. And that has to be our oxygen. Now we're gonna take the grams of oxygen and convert it into moles. 
Our goal in all of these problems is to find the moles of carbon and hydrogen or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this case. 2.52 <clears throat> grams of oxygen. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole. This is 0.1575 mole of oxygen. We're so close, so close. We know the molar ratios. Again, we can make these numbers more user-friendly by dividing by the number of uh, the number that we have the least number of moles of. So we've got 2.210 mole of carbon. We'll divide that by the 0.1575 mole that we calculated for the oxygen. This gives us 1.33 mole of carbon. 0 0.410 mole of hydrogen divided by 0.1575 mole is 2.67 mole of hydrogen. Okay. And then finally, for the oxygen, 0.1575 mole of oxygen divided by 0.1575. Our goal here is to get one of the values to be one, and that's what we did here. This shows us our ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is a 1.33 to 2.67 to one ratio. But would our formula be C1.33, H2.67, O? No. To get these to be whole numbers, we have to multiply them all by three. And then we would get C4H8O3. And that is a viable empirical formula. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that this has been useful and uh, good luck with your combustion analysis adventures. Have a wonderful day.